responding in the comment section. Some of your questions may be answered more comprehensively in the succeeding sessions. So this session will be, uh, this is the third episode of Autalakayan and we'll talk about telehealth for clinic managers. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of O Talakayan. Uh, as of now, I can see that we have 41, about 41 non-video participants. Um, we hope that you are hearing us loud and clear. Um, Ota Lakayan is the PAOT's first online interview program that will tackle different topics and issues in OT practice and education. For the month of May, our Ota Lakayan sessions will focus on telehealth. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the third episode of O Talakayan. Before we will be proceeding to our actual session, maybe we could have a certain recap of what we have already learned or what we have covered. So we have already learned about the basics of telehealth. We have also learned the legal implications or considerations when we are to deliver telehealth. Now we will be exploring practices across all our stakeholders. And for this session, we would be starting with the managers. So basically, they are very important in this service delivery. They will be the one formulating the policies, formulating the guidelines. They will be the one monitoring the process and are in charge when it comes to billing. So basically, these are the concepts that you keep on asking during our previous episodes. And we hope it could really be answered right now during our episode. That's why we're very fortunate that we have a STEAM resource person from different practice areas and from different locations. Lee? Hey, thank you, Kim, for that uh, recap. Um, we'll introduce our three very important guests for today. First is Vanessa Tanibanes, or Van, who is all the way from Davao City. Hi, Van. Thanks for joining us today. Um, Van is uh, already 13 years in clinical practice. She is the program manager of TheraCare Davao. And she has been remotely monitoring clients for six years. So even prior to this ECQ, we can telehealth as Van. So hi, Van. Hello. Good afternoon, colleagues. Thank you for joining us today. Okay, next we have Kate Aguas. Yeah, and so Kate is, yeah, hi Kate. <laughs> so Kate has been in clinical practice for 17 years. She's the clinic director of Communicare Therapy Center in Pasay and Paranaque. So right now Kate is based in Pasay. Yeah, Pasay City. She is also the vice president and partner of Premier Therapy Providers and the Program Director of Life Skills Development Center. So Kate manages the telehealth practice of communicator therapists and provides individual client interventions and home programs via telehealth. So yeah. Hi Kate! Hi everyone! Good afternoon! Thanks for joining Thank us today. You. Okay, next, last but not the least is Jan Denise Gomez or Denise. So Denise has been practicing for five years in UPPGH, Department of 
rehabilitation medicine. So this is a government tertiary hospital. Um, and she's also the OT representative for multidisciplinary tele-rehab with the partner community in Alfonso Cavite. And she's involved in the creation of the OT section Stellar Rehab Guidelines. So all the way from PGH. Hi, Denise. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Bago, bago kami mag, ano, mag, oh, talakayan, sabi ko, magdala kami ng sarili-sariling drink dahil napaka-init. Ipakita natin ang ating mga drinks ngayon. Okay. Hopefully, <laughs> ang ating other participants ay meron ding drink. So please drink with us and let's chat and let's talk. Sige, let's simulan na natin ito. Okay, let's start. I think this will really be a very informative and exciting session. So, for the first question, um, what were the considerations in transitioning from in-person to telehealth in relation to the therapist, the clients, the admin staff, and or the center? Maybe we could start with Van, then we move to Kate, and then we Denise. Van? Okay, hello, good afternoon. Um, I hope na rinig po ako. So, I'm whatever yung I'm whatever yung uh, center even if it's small or big. So, let's first I consider it as a business entity. So, business siya. Okay, so I'm coming from the perspective na sole proprietor. So, pag sole proprietor, ikaw lahat no, parang small team, hindi siya parang corporation or may partner, so ikaw lang. So, di ba ang business, just like any other business, the business meets the demands of of the demands and the needs of the community. Pero right now, aminin na natin sa hindi, yung services natin is low demand because of the crisis. So, as a manager, ang role natin, or as a manager, we have to make the business profitable. So, whatever your reason is, kailangan ko siyang gawing pro profitable because I have a team of therapists na naka-asa doon sa aking, sa aking business. Diba? And I also have a support a team of support staff, so yung janitor, yung admin staff, na naka-asa din doon sa business. So, parang, um, wag, ano tayo, like, Right now, I'm wearing my business person hat, hindi yung as a service-oriented person. Okay. So, yun yung responsibility mo, responsibility natin as managers. So, hindi siya to provide quality service. It's really to make the business profitable para makasustain. Kasi, you cannot take care of your people if you are not sustainable. So, the first consideration when I was thinking about this, well, in Davao kasi, let me give you a background, March pa lang, may mga suspension na ng classes. So, pag suspended ng classes, ang culture dito, feeling nila pati therapy center, suspended. So, March pa lang na feel na namin na, okay, declining yung attendance. And then, February actually nagsimula na since most of our clients are small, medium uh, entrepreneur or mga, mga negosyante din, so, naapektohan na sila nung taal pa lang, yung sa China, yung importation. So, it's really declining. Even yung mga, sabi natin, mga well-to-do na clients, nagbabawas sila ng session because na-forecast na nila yung budget nila, mahihirapan. So, yung nag-iisip na ako, so, March 12, close, uh, March 9, close na kami. March 12, completely wala ng operations. And March 16, ECQ na. Sabi nila, general community quarantine, pero mas daig pa namin yung Maynila sa pagdating sa community quarantine. So, um, nakita ko siya na it's gonna be a new normal. So, I look at this concern as the new normal na hindi siya, yung, yung telehealth services, hindi siya like an alternative. So, it's like I'm treating this as a new form of service delivery. So, hindi siya after nitong lahat ng to, tapos na, temporary lang. Kasi, if you're gonna look at the Spanish flu, two years yon bago na-resolve. So, parang history-wise, tingnan mo na lang. So, baka yung COVID-19, ganun din. So, paano yon So, I started to look at yung mga therapists natin. So, yung earning capacity nila. So, right now, no work, no pay, ba So, walang-wala sila. And same din sa akin as the as the owner. Hindi naman tayo like malaki. So, nakaasa din tayo as a therapist. And then, in terms of attitude, so, swerte naman tayo kasi yung team ko is really, they started with a mentorship program. So, everybody's willing to learn. And sanay sila na when I 
when I give them something new to learn or I tell them, okay, you attend this, you attend that, ano sila, like, alam nila na part yun ng kanilang trabaho. And then yung flexibility and then resourcefulness. Next natin, ting- next kong tinignan sa therapist is yung kanilang resources. Anong meron sila? Lahat sila may laptop. And then, lahat sila may gadget, lahat sila may devices. Pero ang problem, not everybody has internet connection na stable. So, meron data lang, ganyan. So, given that information, I know na hindi ako pwede yung mag-on-screen lang na teleservices or yung tinatawag nating synchronous, hindi pwede. So, dapat dalawa yung options. And then, yung readiness. Of course, walang ready. Kasi kahit na ako sa center, I do remote monitoring sa kasamaang palad, ako lang lahat gumagawa ng sa center. So, hindi ko nabigyan ng pagkakataon yung team ko to do the same. So, it's gonna be a long process. Pero, nung, nag, nung March kasi, when we're de- nagsisimula na mag-decline yung aming attendance, nag-start na kami mag-release ng home program. And then, I was coaching them already how to do remote coaching. Pero, ganun lang kakonti yung opportunity nila. And then, next is the center. So, the center has fixed cost. Ano yung fixed cost natin? Rent, bills, ganyan. Swerte kami sa Davao kasi in Davao, bawal mag-collect ng rent hanggat hindi lifted ang ECQ. And then, um, may mga, yung, yung, aming, yung building owner namin, libre yung aming rent ng April. So, kung May, hindi pa din daw malift, pati May. So, June na kami papabayaran. So, malaking bagay yon Pero for others, um, yung two months na hindi pwedeng mag-collect ng rent, is spread out yon to six months. So, still babayaran mo pa rin yun. So, you still have to come up with the funds. Ang maganda lang ngayon, pwede mo reklamo kay mayor pag siningil ka ng landlady mo and landlord mo. So, bawal talaga mag So, sumusunod naman yung mga tao. Pero yung PLDP, yung mga ganon, so naniningil pa rin, so babayaran mo. So pa, nag-iisip na ako, paano ko siya babayaran? And then, yung support staff namin. So syempre sumasweldo sila habang nakabreak. Da- tapos denied pa tayo sa dole, tapos hindi pa lumalabas yung sa SSL. So parang ang daming factors na kailangan isipin. In terms of their skills, if we're gonna do telehealth, ang computer literacy ng support staff ko is hindi, ganun, hindi, ka, hindi proficient. So, kasi, nag-manual kami. Siyempre, maliit lang kami na center nung start. So, manual lahat. Wala kaming POS. Although, plan siya this April, nag-COVID-19. So, hindi pa natuloy yung aming training sa computer literacy and proficiency. So, yon And then, last ko nang kinonsider ang client. So, hindi ta hindi ako parang plastic. Oh, parang kawawa naman sila, baka mag-regress, ganyan. Kasi ang, ang thinking ko, in the first place, hindi rin naman lahat ng persons or children with disabilities is nakaka-avail ng services. Actually, our services is non-essential at this point. So, they can choose not to do this. ba? So, unang-una, since ang clientele namin is purus, ano sila, puro small business owners din, uh, yung paying capacity. So, pati sila affected ng crisis. So, ang kanilang mode ngayon is survival. And of course, yung, yung therapy services, that's the first to go pag nahirapan sa budget. And then attitude-wise, so alam naman natin, if they're able to pay, usually may yaya, may tagagawa. So very dependent sila sa, sa ating face-to-face service delivery. Even if in the center, um, family involvement is a big thing. Parang talagang tinuturuan, ganyan. Pero siguro naisip na ang mga sagot kasi nila sa amin when we're asking them is that, Teach kasi meron kaming homeschool, lahat parang overwhelmed sila. So parang first to go ka talaga, ganon. And then, yung syempre, resources. Not every, syempre, Davao City. It's a city, but may mga areas dito na parang hindi siya syudad. So, para siyang liblib na puok. At ang internet connection, hindi din ganun ka-consistent. So, yon And then, of course, yung readiness. Attitude kasi to eh, kung, kung gusto ba nila o hindi. So, yan. Yan yung mga tinitingnan natin. And it's like, for me, I realized na I'm back at square one. So it's like building a new center again. Building a new program again. So ito lang, share ko lang. Um, ano, you, I'm sure everybody did a feasibility study already, but you didn't know that it's a feasibility study. When you start to ask your clients na, if we offer telehealth, will you avail? And then, are you willing to pay? If yes, yes, ang sagot dyan, swerte ka. Kasi meron ka kaagad na client. So, 
Um, ang turnout, kamusta? 5%, 20%, 0%? Kaya na yung sasagot niyan, di ba? So, um, I'm treating this when I start to parang make processes and um, do something. It started as, ito yung consider. So, um, sana makatulong dun sa ating mga fellow business owners na when you think about your services, um, ito yung seven piece aspects of marketability of any services. So, consider the price, the promotion, the people, physical environment, which is magiging virtual environment, no, processes, and yung services natin, yung place, and then yung target market natin, yung clientele natin. So, yun. Tapos, ito pa lang yung marketability ng services natin as therapy services. Meron ka pang competition. Nandun siya sa background. Yung indirect competition at saka direct competition. Pero saka ko na lang yun, saka na lang yung sasagutan kasi mahaba pa yung time natin. So, Thank you. Okay, thank you, Van. Ano mo, I remember this uh, image kasi kakaturo ko lang niyan online this semester. I teach management and ano to eh, marketing mix, no? Very important. No? Yeah. Um, let's, hear, how about we hear from Kate also? Kasi ito yung perspective ng a clinic which is in Davao, which is okay, no? How about in Manila? What's your experience in transitioning? Alright, thank you, Lee. Magandang hapon ulit sa inyong lahat. So, um, just to mention, lahat ng i-share ko din sa inyo for this afternoon, uh, yung mga ginawa din at ginagawa ng Communicare Therapy Center. So, Communicare uh, has two branches. Meron kaming isa sa BF Homes Paranaque. Yung isa is nasa loob ng mall, sa SM Mall of Asia. So, um, we have around 80 therapists, PT, OT, speech therapist, tsaka um, sped also. So, why did we transition from telehealth um, galing sa center base? Of course, um, dahil nga nagkaroon ng community quarantine and then naging um, ECQ siya noong March, nagkaroon talaga kami ng madaming contingency planning, nagkaroon ng Zoom meetings kasi nga communicators also um, corporation siya. So, marami kaming partners, may mga execom kami. So, we really had to decide ano yung kailangan namin gawin because of course, kahit um, nasa pandemic tayo, um, kailangan pa rin tayo ng mga clients. Primarily talaga, nag-isip kami ano ba yung pwede natin gawin para makapag-provide pa rin tayo ng best care dun sa clients natin in the situation we're in. So, um, naka-telehealth services ang communicare ngayon but for us, temporary pa rin siya. Hanggang hindi malinaw kung ano yung magiging um, uh, kinabukasan pa nung mangyayari, lalo na dito si NCR, temporary services, lahat yung binigay namin. And at the same time, it's optional. Optional siya for the therapists and optional siya for the clients because we all have different, um, ano eh, may mga pinagdadaanan na iba-iba talaga yung mga tao, yung families, hindi mo alam kung meron pa ba silang pinagkukuhanan ng um, kabuhayan nila. Yung therapists also, are they really ready? Emotionally, mentally, um, resources, ready ba sila sa bahay? Yung iba nga, nasa probinsya, hindi mo alam kung meron silang connection. So, yun yung parang pinakauna naming mga naging considerations. And of course, dahil nga force closure, as mentioned ni Miss Van kanina, meron pa rin binabayaran yung center. Hindi mawawala yun eh. Um, naka ano nga, parang binigyan tayo ng leeway na hindi mo na magbayad ng mga bills. But once na lift na tong ECQ, ma maging GCQ, or maging new normal, hindi natin alam kung kailan dadating yung mga bills natin. So we really have to take care pa rin, of course, dun sa mga um, yung staff yung admin staff, yung mga therapist also, we have to also check kamusta ba sila from time to time. So, um, mahaba-haba talaga yung process, ang daming meetings, um, chinek namin lahat. We also, yung executive director also namin also had to talk to the other therapy center owners dito sa NCR kung ano ba yung mga plans nila, ano yung mga pwedeng gawin. Um, we also waited para dun sa POT kung ano yung guidelines nila with the telehealth services, yung sa PSP, and then sa PT also na association. We waited for all of these things pero ang... Um, kailangan na namin mag-act also. Kasi yung mga parents din mismo, tinanong na nila kami na anong mangyayari sa mga anak namin habang naka, uh, merong pandemic at wala ring school. So, 
yun na nga eh, as mentioned ni Ms. Van kanina, this is not only a practitioner's view. Ano eh, para kaming may mga kailangan ding tignan, may kailangan kaming alagaan, hindi lang yung sarili namin, though mahihirapan ka as a person for your own family, pero madaming tao yung nakaasa sa'yo. So you really have to step up also during this time. So yun lang. Indeed, there are so many factors to consider, no? So, it's not just like I would be offering telehealth then, bahala na. So, a lot of factors, a lot of um, considerations have to be made in order for us to really provide quality services. So, those are the experiences or the perspectives from the private clinics, from the private centers. Now, we would be proceeding to Denise, who is working in a government um, institution, what were the considerations naman when it comes to this setting? Hi, thank you, Sir Kim. Um, so, I want to give a brief background on how our institution makes use of telehealth first. Um, even before our uh, the pandemic started, we already engaged in telerehabilitation. So, through the efforts of our rehab doctors, we partnered with a community in Alfonso Cavite. Um, who also happens to be a partner community of UP Community Health and Development Program, or CHTP. So we use tele-rehab in that context as a new way of delivering our usual rehab services. So we wanted to provide an avenue to access rehab in a far-flung area. So where skilled professionals like us may probably be limited. So what happens there is consultations from doctor to doctor. So there's a tele-rehab team here in PGH, which consists of the rehab residents, um, the consultants, PTs, OTs, STs, psychologists, and rehab nurses. So as necessary po yun. And um, the other end, there's a telecommunity uh, with the municipal health officer together with the caregiver and the patient who are present at the rural health unit. So, however, um, the tele-rehab that we've gotten used to needs to be tweaked a bit for our current situation. Um, we had a department meeting and it was emphasized nga po na um, there would need to be a shift in our perspective and think of tele-rehab as the new normal for service delivery. So, to answer the first question, um, I will share my slides. Okay. Uh, I will discuss the primary consideration for uh, each stakeholder. So for therapists, although yes, we have been tapped for tele-rehab consults before and we've shifted to caregiver-led treatment sessions in our pediatric clinic, we had to address the apprehensions of the therapists in doing an entire session via tele. Because of the hands-on nature of our intervention, such as providing physical assist at key points of control or giving hoo-ha or manual guidance to facilitate correct movement, well, all of these would be impossible through tele. So we had to consider how open and how ready are the therapists skilled because there would be um, even a slight difference in the skills that required from us. For the clients, um, our main consideration for them is the technical requirements as part of, uh, parang yung sinabi din po ni Ma'am Van kanina. Um, we wanted to give kasi a viable option for access to rehab care. So we had to consider which platform is the most convenient and most accessible to them. So in terms of source of internet connection or yung gadget po that they have capable of video or audio call, we had to be inclined to um, what resource they have. For the administration part, um, it would probably be staffing. So our institution has been designated as the COVID referral hospital. So we're also participating in the hospital's COVID support efforts as safety officers. And because of how we operate as a department, I mean, our patients receive holistic rehab care. But because of this, um, there's a lot of people to consider. Like, is it possible to go treat wherein uh, the PT may instruct the patient in transitioning and transfer from bed to wheelchair, and then the OT will provide tabletop activities to target sitting balance naman. Or um, the ST and the OT will target aphasia and cognitive skills together in one activity. Uh, in this way, kasi po, uh, we can maximize the gains in two areas um, in just one session, but will both therapists be available given the added um, task for us? Therapy.
Okay, thank you. Uh, Dinis, nakita natin yung difference, no? Paano nga ba yung considerations? Kapag clinic ka, usually kap- kapag naman clinic, usually smaller unless you're a clinic with many branches. Meron kang iniisip na ang, ang iyong manpower ay um, uh, consultants compared to when you're in a hospital or in a bigger facility that these are employees and that the hospital may have prior commitments. No? At l- lalo na sa PGH, alam natin na COVID referral center may dagdag na work. No? So thank you very much. Actually, medyo nasagot mo na yung, yung susunod kong tatanong eh, which is, ano yung mga systems or protocols na pinut in place no? bago mag-offer ng telehealth? Siguro, i-ask natin to kay Van tsaka kay Kate. Ano yung mga protocols na ginawa nyo in preparation? Like, meron ba training? Require nyo bang inyong mga therapists na mag-attend ng webinars on telehealth? Informed consent? Mga ganyan. Kasi tayo, as POT, hindi tayo nakapag-offer right away. So, we had to prepare. Actually, itong ginagawa natin ngayon, part pa lang ito nun. So, uh, siguro si Kate muna. Kate, what was your experience? Alright, sige. Um, i-share ko lang tong therapy services na ino-offer namin ngayon sa community care. I share the screen ha. So, yan. Can you see it? Yan. So, um, right now, we're offering telehealth services na binigyan namin ng two options yung mga parents. So, meron kaming the intervention and then the home program. So, yung telehealth intervention, we provide it sa clients na mas, um, yung clients dapat with the parents or caregiver or merong guardian na kasama. Tapos yung home program naman is just really parang teleconference, meeting lang with the parents, walang bata. And then, um, for the intervention, yung client profile dapat nakakaupo siya at least 45 minutes. Of course, merong movement, movement breaks in between. And then, for the home program man, home program, this is offered dun sa mga batang mas maliliit. Siguro yung mga hindi pa talaga nakakatagal na in front of also sa computer, sa laptop, or sa gadget. And yung talagang sabihin na natin, mahirap lang na virtually lang niya nakikita yung therapist niya na pwede siyang tumayo agad, um, umalis kung, kung saan sa tapat ng laptop. So, yun yung client profile. And then, um, sa requirements do pareho naman yung intervention and the home program that we we offered sa parents. At least merong computer, may laptop or tablet yung family. Tapos ang ginagamit kasi ng communicator na platform is Zoom. Um, if, before we started pa, we procured licensed also na accounts ng Zoom. So we have several accounts. Ang ginagawa ng communicator, uh, communicator yung host. Na, ng, ng ano, siya yung pinaka-host talaga ng account and then we give it to the um, therapist kung sino yung magkakaroon ng telehealth service, whether it's in the intervention or the home program. So, lahat naman to naka, um, may password protected siya, tapos yung administrative staff namin yung magbibigay ng schedule, at least nakaschedule yung mga telehealth services namin a day before mangyari ito Tapos, meron din kami yung partners also are our tech team para pag biglang hindi maka-log in yung parents, hindi maka-pasok yung, um, yung therapist, meron agad nagto-troubleshoot. And um, also, ginawa rin namin to para easier also for the accounting tsaka yung monitoring din ng mga nangyayaring sessions para hindi kanya-kanya nakikita namin lahat yung mga ginagawa din ng mga therapist. So, yun pa. Um, in the house also, sana may quiet room kung kaya na may quiet room sa bahay. Tapos, uh, online materials also. We prepared online materials. Actually, ano eh, mabilis yung team kasi nga kailangan i-fast track lahat ng mga kailangan magawa para ma- 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 maumpisahan din yung telehealth services. So, ang ginawa namin yung mga um, per department, nag, ano na, gumawa kami ng online library na for for use ng lahat ng ano ng mga therapists also para kung biglang kailangan nila yung mga resources pwede nilang makuha doon sa online library na ginawa namin then of course we had templates madaming templates ng ano ng acknowledgement for the parents tapos yung 
also may ano rin kami, gumawa rin kami ng mga slides para yung Zoom, how to use Zoom, ganyan, how to go about yung start ng telehealth mo. So, and then we keep on checking also dun sa mga therapists namin and then sa clients din na kumusta na ba, anong nangyayaring problem, ano yung mga, na, na, um, mga bagong concerns while doing the telehealth also. So, continue siya. Hanggang ngayon also, we try to adjust, we try to um, baguhin kung anong kailangan baguhin. Tapos, of course, yun pa yung mga toys and materials din na available sa bahay ng mga um, clients mo, tsaka nung therapist also, kailangan ma-maximize talaga. So, lumalabas talaga dito yung pagiging OT natin. Kailangan maging creative, magaling na problem solver. Lahat-lahat na ata ng skills natin, ng traits, kailangan ma, um, mag, ma, uh, mapakita natin ngayon para lang makaserve tayo dun sa clients. no Tapos, um, for the session format nung actual na teletherapy or the intervention that we're offering sa session 1 teleconference talaga so we try to explain sa parents una syempre you have to really check on them kamusta po ba kayo um, kaya ba may mga resources ba tapos yun nga i'm repeating again optional talaga to sa parents and the um, and the therapist. Walang, walang pilitan. Talagang kaya at may resources. Sige, go. Pero hanggang hindi pa, hindi, hindi naman namin eh, ini-enforce. And also, ang nakita lang naming trend, um, nung nag-start kasi, di ba, March, yung, ano, yung nagka-ECQ, marami talagang parents na sabi, hindi, pagbalik na lang po, pag nag-resume na lang po tayo ng sessions kasi they thought mga uh, one week lang, two weeks lang, hanggang nag one month na, hanggang nag-extend pa ulit. Tapos, so ngayon pagdating ng May, madami na yung mga, nag, ano, yung mga parents na parang sabi nila, teacher, hindi na namin alam kung anong gagawin sa bahay. So they started um, returning yung reply slips. Yun pala, Communicare released a memorandum mid pa lang ng March, explaining lahat ng ano yung mga services na gagawin namin. And then, dun sa memorandum, we sent it via email. May reply slip doon, may acknowledgement receipt, and then we explained everything also for the ano din nga, yung confidentiality, yung liability, nung off, yung ino-offer namin, but it's also pa rin sinabi namin, temporary lang talaga siya. So once bumalik tayo, kung may babalikan pa or maging new normal, mag-iiba na naman of course itong mga protocols na to. So yun, for the home program naman, session 1 and succeeding um, sessions, teleconference lang talaga siya. Wala siyang actual na um, teletherapy session. So for the frequency, yung naka-intervention, merong nag once a week, twice a week, merong OT and speech, pwedeng OT lang or sped lang. And then for the home program, it's, it's just really parang checking with them. Pwedeng weekly, every two weeks, monthly, depende. Pero yung iba din, meron naman kaming clients also na una nagpa-teletherapy um, services na intervention with the child. Pero nung hindi na, hindi kaya nung bata pala or may mga other reasons pa sila na hindi nila kayang gawin, nag-home program na lang sila. Yung iba naman, na naka-home program initially dahil feeling laan ako hindi kaya ng anak ko na hindi ko rin kayang turuan yung anak ko na ano, na mag na sabay kami kasi nga ngayon ini-empower natin yung parents sila talaga yung kailangan gumawa nito tayo yung nagiging ano lang eh parang tayo yung nagiging guide nila so yung iba naman na naka-home program parang after 2 3 weeks parang teacher parang kaya na namin mag teletherapy so naging ano nagkaroon na ng switch doon yung ano naman yung yung service na na kinuha nila from us so there you go thank you there. At least um, we are um, learning and hearing um, practices that we can somehow adapt or tweak to our um, centers or to our context. So marami talagang kailangang gawin, ang daming preparations na kailangang ayusin. How about for Van? What were the protocols or the procedures that were in place prior to the implementation of telehealth in your center? Uh, 
Ah, uh, hi. Narinig niyo na po ako. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Same lang din po kina Ma'am Kate na ang offering natin is two options. So, one is yung for home program basis wherein yun nga, monitoring lang for especially for kids na hindi talaga kaya yung screen time. And then for parents na sobrang busy, madaming anak, yung mga ganyan, and madaming responsibility so that they can do it in their own time. Tapos naman, yun din yung Tawag namin doon sa intervention, yun yung ta, parang teletherapy, yun na yung nilabel namin. So, th- those are two options. And same then na merong, they can change. Pero siguro ito na lang yung parang sinundan ko na process, na parad lang din doon sa mga friends natin na magsa-start pa lang mag-isip. So, going back to the marketing mix na pinakita ko kanina, so, people muna yung una kong consider So, yung mga therapists or yung service provider. So, we did online training as early as March 23 to April 9. So, by April 9, tapos na lahat. Ang, ano yung online training? Yung in-offer lang ng ayuta, yung mga nag-offer ng telepractice, in and, ins and outs, yung mga basics na in-offer ng mga school sa US na merong doctor, doctor in OT. So, yung mga iba't ibang university. And then, we collected whatever, ano, whatever uh, information na nakuha. Then, yun na yung naging basis ko for making a guideline kung how to go about with the, with the therapy. So, para nangyari, sa unang mga mga week, mga days, parang puyatan kasi syempre yung time sa US, di ba, iba. So, yon. And then, uh, we summarize the contents and then we share. So, yung aming GC is very active. And then, um, after that, uh, I made a parang protocol. Parang ito yon yung guide siya of implementation of session. So basically, ano yung una mong gagawin? Ganon siya ka parang step by step. And then, how to go about monitoring. So parang more of, ano siya, parang flowchart of what to do. So that, um, at least for my team, yun na yung susundan nila. And then, feedback-feedback lang. And then, saka na lang siya i-change. Pero right now, meron kaming parang step-by-step. Step. Ano yung first mo, first five minutes, ganyan. And then, um, a lot of conferencing na more of helping them how to do it. Yun. And then, meron tayong, meron akong ginawang template in pagdating sa activity plan. So, itong activity plan na to, this is applicable for the option A or yung teletherapy or yung synchronous, yung my screen. Okay, so doon nakalagay yung goal, parang table form siya, nandun yung goal, na next column is the activity, under the activity, um, ano yung materials, anong name ng activity, anong steps, ano yung setup, kasi materials may setup ka, and then instruction step by step. And then, next column is yung performance, expectation. So nandun yung role ng mother role, uh, ano yung expected sa bata na gagawin niya. And then, ano yung role ng therapist? So, example ng role ng therapist, coach ba si therapist? Or magdademo ba si therapist? Ganon. Tapos, nakalagay na din doon in advance kung kunwari yung parent, magdademonstrate ba siya sa anak niya? Kung, kung kunwari, nakalagay din doon, therapist muna yung magdademonstrate. Pag hindi kaya ng anak niya mag-follow, siya yung magdademonstrate. So, yung activity plan, it's important so that the parents know what to expect. Kasi it's hard to dictate habang online kayo, lalo na pag nagkahagulo na, magulo na yung bata. So, hindi natin hindi natin makokontrol yon So, ito lang naman is based dun sa natutunan namin sa mga online telepractice na dapat prepared yung parents. So, kami na lang yung nag-come up ng activity plan. And then, after the roles, yung last column is yung output. So, kung kunwari handwriting, required ba na merong masusulat, tapos may picture, or not applicable. And then, um, sa baba, nakalagay din doon na yung discussion. So, after the session, kung may discussion pa ba kami. So, usually, meron ding time component. Hanggat maaari, 25 minutes lang yung naka-screen yung parang interaction with the kids, tapos um, usap na agad, feedback na agad with the parent. Or activity, five minutes, parent feedback. So parang meron siyang mga ganong susundan. And then template for the home program. So pati, do, pati yung home program namin, uniform. So ayoko kasi yung parang, ano, si gantong therapist, iba yung style niya, gantong therapist, iba yung style niya. So it's hard to, sabi natin, we want to, we want to check for quality service. So as a, as an organization, we dictate 
ano yung quality or ano yung ano yung gusto nating standards. So by doing a template or by doing a parang flow chart ano yung makikita sa isang session, it you you make your life easier as a manager what to look for. So yon. So anyway, for the home program naman, nandoon yung routine tapos sa baba, uh, day, ganun pa rin ang format pero meron doon suggested days. So yon. So uniform siya na sinasend sa mga therapists. And then we also have the online monitoring forms. Uh, Google form siya basically. So kung ngari may sinerve sila na session, dun ilalagay. Kasi nga, syempre, ala nga naman isa-isahin ko pang tawagan kasi wala tayong technical team, wala tayong, like, wala kaming subscription sa Zoom, di ba, na parang pwedeng magumawa ng for me. So everything ako. So parang magsa-schedule lang ako sa isang linggo to check kung sino-sino yung nakapag-provide ng services. And then to the support staff, right now, wala pa silang role kasi hindi ko pa sila natuturuan. So, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to do everything so that when I teach them, mas maganda yung sistema. So, yun. And then, ano yung process? So, um, actually, mahina yung turnout namin dun sa mga current namin na clients. Kasi yun nga, same kay Ma'am Kate, kala nila temporary lang. Ayun. So, ngayon, dun pa actually nagsa-start. Ngayon pa na parang nag-inquire pero nagdadalawang isip pa rin. So, ito, naka-out na tong process na to para yung client, when they ask, alam nila ka anong step na sila bago mag-start yung session. So, usually, ano yung ginawa namin? So, this is one of the processes, yung like decking or how to start. So, kunwari may nag-inquire uh, sa Facebook, di ba halos lahat naman ng centers may Facebook page. It helps kung, me kung meron na kayo mga automated response, magkano yung rates, ganyan-ganyan. So, iset nyo na yan, apat. So, tip ko na lang yun sa iba. So, para less yung re-replyan nyo. Okay? So, paano yung process? Nandun na mag-automatic reply na yung Facebook. So, ang nakalagay doon usually is hinihingi namin yung email nila tsaka yung preferred time nila and day. So, after that, um, kasi magsa-schedule tayo ng free trial. So, bakit tayo may free trial? It's part of the promotion. So, later discuss kung, kung may tanong. Um, they have to experience it. Eh. Kasi it's a new new trend sa Pilipinas. And it's a parang new product na you have to create a demand. Kasi the demand is low. So, parang wala. Wala kang magawa. So, dapat ipa-experience mo sa kanila. And hoping ka. Parang free taste. Ganon. Ayun. So, After that, step two na, mag email na kami sa client agad-agad ng terms and conditions. So that, alam nila yung expectations before agreeing. And then, uh, pati payment details, paano magbayad, nandun na lahat. So para when they decide, um, andun na, wala na silang mga tanong. Now, um, dito din sa step two yung free trial. Okay, so later ko na lang ilagay yung contents ng, ng terms and condition. And then, uh, step three, pag nag-agree na yung client, so maybe maganda yung experience nila sa free trial, usually naman, or hindi na, like in five na mag-free trial, isa lang yung mag-sign up. Minsan, ten na mag-free trial, isa lang yung mag-sign up. So, uh, email back nila. So, our, our forms is actually a fillable PDF. Okay, P fillable PDF siya. So, i-enter na nila doon lahat ng data. Hindi na nila kailangan mag-print, mag-sign. Kasi ayaw ko din sila mag-sign kasi syempre yung data protection. So, nakalagay talaga doon sa terms and conditions namin. For their protection, no signature. Pero once they type in their name there, it means they're affixing their signature. They're agreeing to it. So, yon. And then, after that payment, then session arrangement. So, yun na yung kung uh, ano ba. Doon namin isasend yung Zoom ID nila. And then, saka pa mag-start ng session. And then, the next process, yung number two natin, terms and conditions. What are in the terms and condition? So, andyan na siya lahat. Yung options, yung A and B. Ano yung magiging role ng therapist, ng parents, yung rates and payment terms, and then yung receipt. Kasi sa Davao, eh, 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 parang in general in Mindanao, masipag sila humingi ng resibo. <laughs> so gusto nila yung resibo. So nakalagay na talaga doon na hindi kami makakapag-issue ng receipt kasi yung receipt namin, syempre manual tayo, nasa center, and hindi kami makapasok. So pagbalik na lang. Then um, nakalagay na rin doon yung conditions ng free trial nila. And then yung privacy and confidentiality. Ito, both ways yung privacy and confidentiality. Bawal mag-record ng session kasi Zoom tayo. So, bawal mag-record ng session for their protection. And then, um, bawal i-share yung mga forms namin sa iba. So, meron talagang nakalagay sa email na bawal. And then, you can set 
para dun sa mga mga friends natin no, na hindi nakakalam, you can set the privacy of your email para hindi siya ma-download or hindi siya ma-email sa iba. Siyempre, ano naman yun? Uh, for our protection. Tapos nakalagay din doon yung we don't sell their information even if they're just going to avail the free trial. Yung iba kasi, feeling nila pag free trial, you're going to give their information to everybody. So nakalagay talaga sa statement namin na we don't share, we don't we don't um, sell their information, your data, your birthday, and your cell phone, your email sa ibang tao. And also, nakalagay din doon na kasi yun yung mga importante na feeling ko dapat nakalagay. Um, bawal mag-record and then bawal nila i-share yung program, yung home, anything. Uh, so, bawal siya. Uh, bawal i-share. So, dapat um, sa kanila lang. So, yun. Tapos, yung risk and benefits. So, kasama dun sa risk, yung baka yung data nila, since we're using Zoom, we're using Google Drive, if they're, if, free yung subscription nila at risk talaga yung information nila. Pero parang nakalagay doon na sa part nyo yun. Kasi sa part namin, nakasubscription yung Google Drive namin. So, hindi siya, hindi siya mapupunta sa iba. And also, since, uh, again, uh, in answering doon sa quality control. So, as the program manager, dapat may access ako doon sa lahat ng document. So, nakalagay din doon sa privacy confidentiality. As the program manager, may access siya doon sa lahat ng document related doon sa client. And then, nakalagay din doon na may times na pwede akong sumama sa session. And then, in terms of recording, pwede siya with permission. Pero hindi pwede i-share sa kahit na anong media plat platform. And then, disclaimer. So, disclaimers yon sa data protection. And then, yung outcomes. Na, syempre, magiging iba yung outcomes. If they're expecting certain outcomes nung nag-face-to-face, so, parang hindi siya, hindi siya always applicable. Ayun. So, and then, gunda, si inform consent. So, lahat yan, two pages, tapos number, para lang clear. Tapos yun, uh, nakalagay na rin doon na if they, parang may check, tapos if they put their name, and then nakalagay din kung paano nila isa-save yung document. So, yon Pag in-email back nila sa amin, good as signed na yon So, ganun siya. Tapos, and then, ito yung process. So, yung, ako, ato, ato yung manager, no? So, si therapist, kung online, kung synchronous yan, si option A, so, dapat si activity plan nandyan. Pero, naka- CC ako dun sa activity plan as the manager. And then, I will be the one to store it dun sa client folder. Then, go sa session. Tapos, meron, tayo, meron kami tinatawag na telehealth service rendered form. Kasi parang hindi ko natatawagan, nag-serve ka ba kay ganito, nag-serve ka ba kay ganyan. So, i-check ko na lang yung form. And this is also the basis for payroll. And then, uh, meron kaming client attendance card. So, ito mamaya papakita ko. Then, after dyan, may treatment notes. Kasi, um, yung natutunan din namin dun sa mga mga seminars na dapat uh, may documentation. So, dapat may treatment notes kung parang intervention session. Ayan. Tapos, ito, isustore ko din siya sa client folder. So, matrabaho siya. Pero saglit lang yan, wala pang 3 hours yan gawin. Mga 2 hours lang yan. So, ito, Ito yung telehealth service rendered form. So, it's a Google form na nandun yung name ng client, date ng session, type ng service kung home program ba or teletherapy, sino yung therapist, and ano yung mode of payment niya, bank transfer ba, or meron siyang advance na binayaran sa clinic. Ang good thing about this form is that meron yung responses. So, Excel file yan pag lumabas. So, makikita mo na agad doon sino-sino yung mga therapist at sino-sino mga client. Yung nag-serve at anong time. Yun. Tapos, doon na, pwede mo na i-manage kung ilan yung na-serve nila. Pwede mo na i-compute diretsyo. Then, pwede mo na siyang lagyan ng, ng formula kung magkana yung magiging sweldo nila for the week. Yun. So, ito sila, meron sila sa email nila na, nila na link yung mga therapist para every time na matapos sila sa session, i-input nila dito. And then, this one naman, yung attendance card, uh, once na uh, nag-agree na yung client, nagbayad na siya, so, i-email ko siya ng Google Google Sheet ito, Google Spreadsheet ito. So, basically, it's their invoice na, kunwari, nagbayad ito, like this client, nagbayad siya ng 10 sessions. So, bayad na yung 10 sessions niya noong May 1. So, ang mangyayari, pag na-serve ko yun, ila ilalagay ko yun. So, ako na administrator, na manager, ang mag-fail out nito. So, ang setting nito dun sa client is for viewing only, not for editing. Kasi para lang makita niya na ay, oo nga pala na-serve, na ay, ubus na pala yung 
aking ano, yung aking binayad na advance. So yun kasi 'di ba ang toxic kung every bayad magpapadala ka ng invoice. So maganda isang document na lang tapos hindi ka na magi-email. So ito pa lang low cost lang ba? So libre lang siya sa Google. So yun. And then um ayun, so dun, dun po. So sa kanya lang yung sunod na lang yung payroll. So, Thank you. Okay, thank you, Van. Ako, I'm sure ang ating mga, not just clinic managers who are here, no? Kasi I, I'm seeing sa ating attendance kayo, may mga clinicians din. I'm sure they're learning a lot. Kasi it's really important to have protocols in place. It's not just to guide you what to do, eh. Pero later on, when you do quality assurance, yun din, no? You can check, tama ba yung mga ginawa ng therapist ko? Tama ba yung ginawa namin? Pag nag-check and balance ka later, makikita mo, no? Kasi you're guided by a set of protocols. Um, thank you for these perspectives, no? From private clinics in Manila and Davao. Now, I wonder, paano kapag hospital setting or in the government, no? Denise, meron ba kayong ibang ginagawa? Okay po. Um, for us naman po, the first thing that we did in the department was, um, as was uh, mentioned earlier, um, we came up with our own institutional guidelines for tele-rehab. Um, this is led by Dr. Carl Chico, who happens to be one of the pioneers of tele-rehab in PGH, even as a resident. So he, partner, he patterned it after international practice frameworks. And to make it culturally relevant, he incorporated findings from the research that he did naman po. At the section level, uh, we also had to make our own service policy. Uh, making it specific to occupational therapy, so how we screen patients, how to go about the te teletherapy session, and what resource materials to use. So for this, we use the interim guidelines for engaging in telehealth from PAOT, our institutional umbrella guidelines, and international standards. Um, for the training of the therapists, uh, most of our therapists are... Um, trained na po in teleriha because we've been tapped before as consultants po. Um, however, we made it a point to reinforce it with an online teaching learning activity for all of the OT staff revolving around two things. So namely, um, navigating around the platforms to troubleshoot technical difficulties and preparing an activity. So this includes po instructing and providing feedback, relying more on verbal and visual cues and prompts than hoha. For the informed consent, um, since we are a big institution, we have systems that are centralized. So we have informed consent forms for both patients and the tele-rehab providers and assent forms for patients unable to give their consent. So this is in both English and Tagalog. Um, these forms contain the usual risks, benefits, collecting and processing data. Um, and all these forms underwent review and approval of our legal department prior to using them. For data privacy naman po, um, we're following the recommendation of the National Telehealth Center to use Google Meet for our video conferencing. Second choice lang po would be yung Viber for video calls or audio calls um, because these applications have end-to-end -end encryptions and can be accessed through the PGH Wi-Fi. So it's another perk of being in a big hospital. Um, we have institutional access so the therapists can use the platforms for free um, and there are additional features and it is assumed to be more secure. Um, I want to emphasize on this one, um, the adverse events, because ensuring safety while treating remotely may pose challenges. So even though patient safety measures are in place, um, that's why they're called accidents. No one wanted them to happen or except, expected them to happen. Um, to address this, we made it a requirement for the patients to have a means of contacting a nearby health facility. So it can be their barangay health center, a private clinic, or their local hospital so that the patient can be brought in for immediate medical concerns should it be warranted. Um, but lastly, um, none of these protocols or systems in place would have worked if there isn't administrative support to this program. So our department is blessed to have full administration support from the section heads to our department chair, even the hospital officers uh, back our tele-rehab program. Okay, thank you, Dini. So we have um, heard so many protocols. So probably in your centers, if you have missed any component that they have mentioned, so it would be good that we could adapt some, um, get something from the practices that have been shared here. 
Um, in particular, with the safety protocol too that Denise has raised a while ago, I think that is also an important consideration. So what would the parents or what would the caregivers do if ever there will be unforeseen incidents during the running of telehealth? So now we will be proceeding with the last question. So for the managers, how do you manage your payroll? And is the therapy center distribution the same? as before ECQ. So what were your, um, what were the payroll um, considerations or what were the systems in place when it comes to distribution of the therapies and the center share? Maybe we could start with Kate. Sige, okay. Ito na, ito na yung ano, pinaka gustong malaman lang sambayanan. <laughs> Joke lang. So, um, with Communicare, Centralized kasi talaga yung system namin pa rin. So kung ano yung ginawa namin before sa um, center-based sessions, ganun pa rin ngayon habang we're doing the telehealth services. So yung mga system um, admins namin, yung mga staff are working remotely. Tsaka yung mga partners are very ano, um, hands-on talaga when it comes to dito sa, ano, sa management kahit ngayong naka-telehealth services. Sabi nga namin, actually, um, parang mas mabigat pa, mas madugo pa, mas madami ka pang inaasikaso habang kahit nasa bahay ka lang, um, even if you're working remotely, no? So, um, dun lang sa question. So, ang billing ng centers, ng, ng branches namin are done pa rin by our um, administrative staff talaga. So, we email everything to the parents um, sa statement of account, sa yung mode of payment namin is um, transfer siya sa bank accounts ng, ng clinic and also pwede rin direct um, deposit sa bank. Tapos yung iba kasi sa amin na kayon nga, like kila Miss Van, naka-10 sessions pa sila. Meron pa silang existing sa amin ng mga funds. So, um, naka-quickbooks din kasi yung, ano, yung system ng communicare when it comes to sa finances. So, nakikita pa rin namin lahat yan. Kaming mga admin, nakikita pa rin namin kung ano yung tinatakbo na nung, ano, nung mga funds at mga payments ng mga client. Tapos, um, for the proof of transaction ng payment ng clients, every time kasi, lalo na ngayon, yung iba pwedeng magpunta ng bank, yung iba nag-gcash, yung iba nag-transfer, we always send via email na natanggap na namin, na-check na namin dun sa bank namin, real time na natanggap na namin. So, we send them email at the, at the same time, text din para lang ano talaga, para confirm, para walang, hindi tayo magkakaproblema in the future with this one. Tapos, um, acknowledgement receipt, we do that also. We send pa rin sa kanila lahat. So, ganun din. Yung mga therapist din naman namin, mayroon kasi rin kaming proof of service nila, yung TSRs, like the therapy services records, yung summary. Ginagawa din nila yon parang um, So, we release their PFs, their professional fees, every 15th and 30th pa rin, pareho pa rin yun. Tapos, ang communicator kasi naka-ATM payroll din kami. So, wala rin kaming problema with disbursement ng mga um, funds nila. Ngayon, um, ang question pa kasing isa dyan, di ba, magkano ba yung sinisingil namin ngayon sa mga kliyente? Um, ang ginawa ng communicator because... Um, Ano din to eh, dahil parang first run nga siya. Parang ang sabi ni Miss Van kanina, parang kaming nagsimula ulit dun sa parang may bago kaming service na ino-offer. Lahat nangangapa, lahat tinitignan muna lahat ng pwedeng magawa. So, what the Execom and partners decided on is mag-offer kami ng um, lower. Hindi siya ganun kababa, but it's um, lower yung rates namin compared dun sa center-based session. Tapos, yung fees ng teleconference only na service na binigay namin is lower also compared dun sa actual na um, teletherapy or the intervention service that we offer to them. Ngayon, yung cut ng clinic at ng, um, ng therapist, same rate pa rin yung binigay namin. So, we didn't adjust on that yet. But um, actually, nag-consider nag na rin nga kami kung ano yung pwedeng gawin also ng center. But of course, we explained to our therapist na yun nga, marami pa rin naman kailangang 
um, we have to keep the center afloat habang naka-ECQ, habang hindi lahat ng services na bibigay. So, yun muna yung um, trust na pinag-usapan namin na same muna yung rates. Though sa community, we have different matrix also ng mga therapists namin. Depende yan eh, kung how long have you been practicing, yung mga um, continuing education that you've been doing. Iba-iba yung matrix ng mga therapists. So, we maintain that um as of the moment pero we will ano we will also check on it um hanggang tingnan natin kung saan tayo dadalhin nitong ano nitong pandemic na to and then um i think yun lang kailangan lang din talaga um ma ano ma-impose din namin tsaka yung yung um makita ng mga parents din na ano ba yung tinatakbo na ng mga funds nila ano yung mga um yung payments para lang transparent lahat ano nakikita agad hindi na kailangan i-check pa ganyan so um yun every day talaga we check tapos yung yung whole team yung yung buong um staff pa rin are working right now para ma ano to maayos lahat naman kung in terms to on sa finances sa accounting side ng sen Yan lang. Hey, thank you. Thank you for that, Kate. How about Van? Sa inyo, paano ang inyong ano, payroll? Ay, Van, medyo naka, ano yung kaya ta? Mute. Yeah. Sorry again. Okay. So, yung yung sa amin kasi, swerte lang din kasi naka ATM lahat. So, naka parang parang pareho kina Ma'am Kate na naka ATM silang lahat. However, kasi nag-change kami, like may transition kasi kami right now. So, nagka-problema kami dun sa mga client na may advance payment. Kasi, um, we actually naka-store siya sa clinic sa vault. So, hindi siya naka-bank. So, yun yung problem. So, well, bu- blessing na rin this, guys, na hindi rin kasi lahat nag-avail ng services. So, mas madami kaming client na new client. So, nangyari, so, they pay sa bank, tapos fund transfer na lang sa mga sa mga therapists. So, that's how we manage yung payroll, like yung Google Form, doon ako naka-base. So, kung wala silang in-input sa Google Form at wala akong document na na-receive, ibig sabihin, hindi sila nag-serve. So, wala silang payroll. And then, we, wala silang bayad. And then, um, weekly kasi kami nagbibigay ng sweldo. So, weekly siya. Tapos, um, kung cut nila is same ba? Yes, same. Actually, lower nga eh by 5% yung sa center. Kasi, um, I understand naman na masyadong mahirap mag-prepare for telehealth. Actually, mas mahirap pa siya compared sa like actual face-to-face yung preparation. So, I understand that. Pero nakiusap lang din ako sa mga sa mga therapist ko na kung pwede, kailangan din kasi ng center ng income. Siyempre, we have fixed costs. Kaya parang kailangan kong kausapin. Okay, bakit ganun? Um, di naman sa ano, pero napansin kasi may mga, ayoko din na, ayoko din na may masabi na meron kasi akong mga, hindi naman experience ko, pero may mga narinig ako sa, sa ibang places na when a therapist says na, Bakit kailangan may cut yung clinic? Eh, wala na. Hindi naman ginamit yung center. So, yun. No, para to prevent lang. No, para bago pa nila yun masabi. So, I, we have to explain to them yung perspective ng center. And, um, yun. So, sana yung, sana yung mga managers, walang ganong attitude yung yung team nila. Pero hindi natin kasi yun matatanggal. So, it's, it's nice that, you, you know, you talk to them about it. And then, our rate is lower. Kasi nga, we treat it as a new product. So, para tayong penetration the market strategy. Na lower talaga kasi you're trying to introduce it. So, although yung work, yung information, hindi siya lesser than the face-to-face. Actually, mas marami pa nga silang nakukuha kung tutuosin sa telehealth. Yun. But we have to keep it down, yung rate. Uh, ano pa yung mga reasons bukod sa new product siya crisis ngayon so if you 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 charge the same parang you're being insensitive dun sa nangyayaring crisis and then another reason is that ay uh, yung katotohanan na yung competitors or even direct competitors natin indirect hindi therapy services yung iba't ibang intervention services na meron diyan sa online mura lang so, and yung maraming free resources. Actually, nakaga- nakakuha kami ng mga ganong reply eh, na parang marami namang free online, na marami namang free ganyan. So, everything is free. 
So they don't see the value of our services. Actually, yung yung yun yung napansin natin uh, sa amin lang ha, sa sa experience namin kasi nga madaming libre. So i-take natin yon into consideration kaya we charge lower. So yun po siya. Thank you, uh, Van. How about kina Denise? No? So different kasi hospital naman. So meron ba nagbago sa payroll in your experience? Okay. Um, so for a straightforward answer, we currently do not charge our patients for tele-rehab. Um, and for the payroll po, uh, we consider this as a part of the rotation of tasks like bed treatment, splinting, and handling interns. Um, Salary-based pa rin po kasi kami, so wala po masyado effect on us. Okay, thank you very much. Kim, meron pa ba tayong mga ano? questions from the audience? Yeah, maybe we can accommodate certain questions from the audience. So, we have this. How do we encourage more clients to avail of telehealth? So basically, from the manager's perspective, because a lot would be apprehensive. It could be the therapist, it could be the family member. So in your center, or in your experience, how do we encourage more clients to avail of this new service delivery? Kate or Van? Pamuna. Sige, ma'am, ikaw muna. <laughs> Sige, alright. Sige, no? So, with Communicare talaga, um, ang communicator pa lang namin ngayon, existing clients, we haven't, um, hindi pa kami nagtitake in talaga ng mga bagong clients. Do marami na rin kaming mga, ano, mga, um, nag inquire na, na mga gusto na talagang magpa-therapy din kasi nga, ano na, magto two months na tayong naka-ECQ eh. So, they're, they're trying already to contact us. Pero, how do we encourage them? Ito na rin talaga yung time eh. Sinasabi na namin sa kanila na we were really, not, we're really unsure kung ano yung mangyayari. So, hindi namin pa alam kung makakabalik na tayo sa center base. Kahit mag-GCQ pa tayo eh. Um, di ba yung safety pa rin ng mga um, parents, anong nung clients natin, yung mga therapist din, hindi pa talaga natin alam kung papayagan na ba tayong bumalik. Tsaka yun nga, um, ngayon na wala pa pati DepEd, August pa babalik yung mga classes ng mga bata. So, we would really want to empower itong mga parents, no? itong mga clients natin na, oo, mahirap, um, baka yung isip nila magulo yung bahay nila, yung anak nila, first time nila ulit ngayon na magiging teachers sila ng anak nila. So, yung mga ganong hesitations nila, it's really, ano eh, I think na-mention din to ni, ano, no, ni, um, ni Mr. Mishano, nung, nung isang talakayan, sabi niya, it really helps to build yung rapport sa patient ninyo din. So, minsan nga, hindi lang ano to, hindi lang basta, uh, mami mag-teleterapy tayo, minsan yung kailangan lang nila muna ng kausap, Kailangan lang muna nilang makikinig sa kanila. Kailangan mo muna silang kumustahin lang. Yun muna. You can start with that one. Tapos kung hindi pa sila ready and then you um, um, mag-step back ka. Tapos pag uh, kumustahin mo lang sila from time to time. And then pag ready na sila, lalapit na ulit sila sa iyo. Eh. Kasi yung mga bata nga, kailangan na rin nilang may ginagawa sa bahay. So there and important pa also, hindi lang actually yung parents, yung mga therapist din. Kasi talagang hanggang ngayon, sabi ko sa inyo may 80 therapists kami but I think it's around 50% pa lang yung nagte-telehealth. Dahil madami pa rin silang hesitations, marami pa rin silang questions, nag-aalangan pa rin sila. So, yun nga, as managers also or as um, a colleague, as a friend, na OT, na SP, PT, SPED teacher, kailangan mo talagang ano, makipag-usap, magtanong ka. Um, tanungin mo ano na yung ginagawa nila, paano mo ba na-encourage tong client. Kasi minsan naman yung iba daw, um, tinanong na nila yung, yung, ba, yung parent, nakasampung beses na sila na-communicate, pero hindi talaga pa nag-oo-o yung parent. So sabi namin, hindi ikaw yung problema, baka may iba silang concerns, may iba pa sila ngayong pinaprioritize, as na-mention ni Ms. Van. So yun, ito talaga, itong time na to, hintayan. So we really have to be patient, hindi natin alam kung kailan sila magiging ready, yung 
client, yung therapist. So yun, ano lang talaga, support, 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 at guide ng guide itong, ano, itong times na to. Yan lang. Okay, thank you very much. Na, si, ano ba, Denise, may i-add ka ba doon sa inyong experience or? So, same lang din po with Ma'am Kate. Um, we don't have uh, patients po. Um, we're just catering to yung mga patients po na na-discharge sa amin early because of the pandemic. Kasi um, there are studies po na teletherapy pa rin po works. Um, it's better than no therapy at all. So yun po, parang inexplain lang din po namin na kung ready na po sila, kung okay lang po sa kanila. Kasi it's a voluntary thing pa rin naman po. So yun po. Okay, thank you very much. Siguro isa pang question, no? Marami tayo ako kung question about cost eh. Sabi nila, do we have a range of cost per session to know if our costing is just right or too high? Or rather, the price of the session. Meron ba tayong guide tungkol dyan? Range of cost. Hindi compare kasi, no? Iba, iba yan. Iba yan sa Manila. Iba sa Davao. Iba pag yeah. private, public. Ano kaya po? So, ako lang. Ako may input ako doon sa part na yun. So, right now, um, um, yung, siguro yung dapat na tingnan ng nung manager is sabi ko nga again, yung sustainability ng place. Kailangan nyo nilang isipin yung fixed cost nila. So, supposedly, um, kung ano yung cut ng center and then kung add mo lahat ng cost mo, divide mo yun kung ilan yung client and then that's the cost. Pero, since we charge lower, no, actually, um, parang ang nangyayari ngayon, nag -re invest ka dun sa charging mo. Kasi, hindi ka talaga muna parang kikita. Actually, labas, labas ka talaga ng money. So, yun, yun siya. And also, um, it's another way of encouraging. So, add ko na lang dun sa mga sinabi ni Ma'am Kate. Um, it's a way of encouraging them na all cheaper yung cost, sana mag-avail tayo. Ganon. Kasi, hindi naman din sila na so short change. Ayun. So, tapos, can I add lang pala regarding dun sa parang like, how to encourage. Actually, uh, lahat tayo nagtatrial and error. Pero, in terms of services kasi, it's really more of a pull strategy. Like, making them interested. Like, breaking their, ano, their interest. So, uh, I'm so happy to see a lot of uh, Facebook pages or yung mga centers na nagpo-provide ng OT tip, yung mga ganyan, yung mga uh, free printables. Actually, those are pull strategies. You're actually um, targeting kung sino yung, sino yung interested. Pero siguro, makakapag-suggest lang ako, parang additional to it, is that um, maybe wag natin ilabas lahat na libre. Wag natin sabayan yung mga competitors natin na free, 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 free. So, you can just, like, part of it, like, kunwari, improve, how to improve fine motor skills, don't put everything out there. So, lagyan natin siya ng konting, okay, uh, you wanna, kunwari, um, I spy, nag-release ka ng printable na I spy na ginawa mo, which is, wow, very helpful, no? And then, this is, uh, this is the skill that improves it. Pero pwede mo siguro lagyan ng, you wanna know what skills can improve pa, yung parang mga ganyan. So, para to encourage them to consult. So, yon. Tapos, um, um, in contrast naman din kina Ma'am Kate, he, walang hesitations yung mga therapist namin. It's just that low yung demand. Konti lang talaga yung nag yung nag avail So when you do that, when you when you do informational na mga campaign, pero hin, parang half lang yung ibibigay mo, it encourages them to talk more and then you have a chance to offer free trial and hopefully you create a demand kasi they get to experience it. So yun. Okay, so maybe we can proceed with the last question. So this is more directed to Mam Van and Mam Keith. How are we going to reconcile um, the offering of telehealth and the limiting of the screen time of children? So this is one um, concern that was raised. Um, we will be offering telehealth, but at the same time, we are also advocating for the limitation or for the decreasing of screen time. So how are we then going to encourage the parents who may have certain readings when it comes to this one to still avail of telehealth? 
Sige, ako muna. <laughs> Oo. So, yan. No, actually, nakikita ko na rin yan with all the posts, no? Yung mga parents dun sa mga group ng parents also. They're asking nga, sabi nyo dati, walang screen, di pwedeng screen time, lalo na sa maliliit na bat. At tapos ngayon, lahat virtual. Though also, we have to keep in mind na iba nga itong time na to. This is bago sa atin. And also, when we offer it, teletherapy services. Hindi naman lang din, di ba, naka ano yung bata. Hindi naman siya naglalaro lang na ano, habang you're virtually nakikita ka niya. Hindi rin lang naman din ito, like parang iiwanan lang ng magulang. Kaya very important nga na sinasabi natin. Kami talaga with the teletherapy, we kailangan one of the ano yun, protocol. Kailangan may kasama yung bata. And also, when you do teletherapy services kasi, di ba, may mga activities ka eh. So, they have pa rin naman movement activities. Meron pa rin silang mga circle time. May mga writing activities sila. Yung mga speech, meron pa rin silang mga worksheets. So, iba-iba pa rin naman. And then, yun nga, kaya natin din gusto ng empower yung parents kasi nakakaisip na sila ngayon ah na pwede ko pala tong gawin for fine motor activities na goals ah ito pala pwede pala namin gawin na exercises nag yoga sila so yung binibigay mo naman na 45 minutes an hour na session dun sa bata hindi lang talaga siya nakaupo at ano lang walang interaction di ba ang mahirap din naman kasi with yung screen time talaga na nanonood lang sila or naglalaro lang sila walang interaction yun eh this one naman we really really want na may ginagawa yung bata, may interaction sa therapist, sa parents, sa caregiver, or kung sino man yung kasama niya. Kaya, um, hindi naman talaga siya, ano, hindi siya parang, ano, yung productive naman yung session na nangyayari. Hindi lang siya talaga, nanonood lang siya, or nakikinig lang. Yun. Thank you. Ma'am Van? Uh, same lang ako kay ma'am, like um, redefine what screen time is. So, teletherapy is not a screen time na as they know it. So, yun. Yan lang. Thank you. Okay, so it's a very informative session. We have learned so many things from the protocols, from the considerations that must be made on the part of a manager, from payroll to training, conducting feasibility studies. So, these are all the tasks that managers or clinic owners need to really perform in order to deliver quality telehealth services. Um, maybe we could also reiterate certain things such as um, making sure that telehealth or the services that we are providing is also in line when it comes to national guidelines and data privacy, confidentiality, or informed consent. So if we could avail platforms, even if we would be paying, I think that would be a good investment so that we, would, we, we, we wouldn't really be at fault when it comes to these regulations or when it comes to these um, legislations that we also have to follow. And one important um, realization too that we have right here is involving all the stakeholders when it comes to the decision making. So as many Sure, we need to talk to the therapists, we need to talk to the parents, catch up with them. If they are really coping or if they are really um, having certain difficulties when it comes to this service provision, so that in time we could make certain modifications or adjustments for the betterment of our service delivery. Okay, so Lee. Okay, so as we end, oh, record-breaking to, Kim, no? Lumampas tayo ng isang oras. Pero I'm sure our, um, ilan tayo ngayon, no? Parang 71 participants have learned so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Van, Kate, and Denise for sharing the experiences of your um, institutions. Very informative ang session natin ngayon. And I'm sure, marami pa siguro mga tanong dyan, no? Nasusubukan natin sagutin of this um, webinar. So, before we go, syempre, mag-vlog tayo. No? Hindi naman ang product. Mag-vlog tayo ng ating next o talakayan. Ayan, no? May poster na siya. Ang ating next o talakayan will be in, in Mar May 11. Sabi ko November, but ganun? May 11, Monday, 4.30 p.m. Ang ating topic would be Parent Education Using Telehealth. At si Bernard Carpio, one of our members, will be presenting no, what he presented in his 
uh, thesis, yung learner-centered parent education in the pediatric setting, occupational therapy practice using telehealth. So, kita-kits, ayan na po, meron tayong link. Ipapadala rin namin sa mga emails nyo, so don't worry. At dalagin pa natin yan ng QR code para teki-teki. Okay? So, again, May 11, Monday, 4.30pm ang ating next total kaya. With that, again,